Hey, what's up? Today, I'm gonna show you how to make a properly cooked pan of fajitas. They're juicy, they're tender, and they only take 25 minutes to make. This is weeknighting. To get started, I'm gonna need some fajita meat. I've got one and a half pounds or 700 grams of top sirloin roast here. I chose sirloin over say skirt or flank steak because in my part of the world, it's 40 to 50% cheaper per pound. And I think it has just as much beef flavor and intramuscular fat. But I wanna recreate the thin form factor of skirt or flank steak because that thinness equates to shorter muscle fibers and short muscle fibers basically mean more tender, easier to chew meat. So I'll cut this roast in half and then I'll cut that half in half one more time. The second time though, the halving is gonna be horizontal. This way I'm gonna get two half inch to three quarter inch steaks per half. And there we go. Once I've got the roast cut into four thin steaks like this, I'm gonna season them aggressively with both salt and cracked black pepper on both sides. Go really heavy here. After that, I'll set these sirloins off to the side to cure for about 10 minutes while I get my fajita prep sorted out. The first thing I've got here is 250 grams of julienne bell peppers, half orange and half red because, you know, it looks good and nothing too fancy on the prep here other than making sure to remove as much of the watery inner rib as possible because those will sog up the final dish. To bring a little bit of heat and a ton of fresh chili flavor, I'm gonna pair those bell peppers with a large poblano pepper. Just like for the bell pepper, I'll remove the seeds and any excessive interior ribs. One large poblano should yield about 125 grams. Behind that, I'll cut one whole white onion or 250 grams worth. And for that, I've halved it, cut off the stem end, and then cut it into quarter inch strips or longitudinally. For high heat stuff, I prefer to cut onions longitudinally or pole to pole vertically because they hold onto their texture a lot better than latitudinally cut onions. Those can be kind of slimy when you cook them. Next, I'll need 10 to 15 grams of garlic. That's about four large cloves that I smashed through my garlic press. And then I'll need a little bit of fajita seasoning. For me, that's a combo of two grams of ground cumin, two grams of chili powder, two grams of paprika, and one gram of dried oregano. If you don't want to make your own spice blend, just sub in some Lowry's seasoning salt because that is literally what most Mexican restaurants use on their fajitas. Aside from the veggies and spices here, I've also got two halves of a lime to season up the final dish and some chopped fresh cilantro that's gonna go inside and on top. Once I've got my steaks all seasoned and my fajita prep is all sorted out, I'll grab my 12 inch cast iron pan and drop it on the stove over very high heat. By the way, a lot of people have asked me where I got this pan and to be honest, it was from Kohl's and on sale. It's a Food Network brand 12 inch pan and I really love it. It was like 30 bucks. I'll link to it in the description. Once this pan is very hot, I'll add in a serious drizzle of high smoke point oil, like four tablespoons worth. While that heats, I'll quickly dab off any excessive moisture on the outsides of my steaks. Moisture no good, that makes bad sear. And once the oil is shimmering and just starting to wisp up smoke like this, I'll add in all four of my beefs. The amount of oil that I'm using here might seem like a lot, and it is, but these are very thin steaks and I need to transfer as much heat as possible from the pan to the meat. That's gonna get us a sear on the outside well before the beef gets cooked to well done. To go one step further here to ensure a good sear, I'm gonna use a spatula to press these steaks into the pan for five to six seconds each to really get that surface in direct contact with the hot pan. Once I've given all these steaks a long firm press, I'm gonna cook them for another 60 seconds or 90 seconds in total on the first side. And at that point, I'll come back and take a peek to see if I've gotten a decent sear. That looks pretty good. So I'm gonna flip this over and then the other three, and then I'll cook these on the back side for another 90 seconds or so. After 60 to 90 seconds on the back side, these are looking good. So I'm gonna move them over to a plate to rest while I cook the peppers and the onions. I'll mention that at most Tex-Mex restaurants, they're gonna cook already sliced beef with the peppers because it's just easier and faster, but of course that's gonna lead to having neither the peppers nor the beef cooked properly, like at all. This beef is gonna totally rip and you guys will see in a second. Speaking of ripped beef, I am now, basically, thanks to Future, the sponsor of this video. Future is a fitness app that connects you with an online personal trainer who sends you workouts each week, monitors your performance, and messages you to keep you motivated. If you've been watching this channel for a while, you guys have seen me talk about Future before, and I keep doing ads for them, not because I just wanna show myself crushing weight at the gym, but because I actually use this app a lot. The thing that I probably like most about it is that it keeps me accountable and has really helped me keep a consistent fitness habit. Future 
other coaches are legit real world trainers too with experience training pro athletes, celebrities, and normal people of all fitness levels. And if you don't have a gym membership, your trainer can develop a plan based on whatever gear you might have access to. The initial sign up is really easy too. I just answered a few questions to help choose my coach who is Kyle. Then I had a call with Kyle to talk about my goals and based on that, he made a custom routine that not only fits my schedule but has continued to evolve with my fitness level. So to get a custom workout plan that keeps you motivated and gets you freaking shredded like the b-man go to <laughs> go to tryfuture.co slash brian lagerstrom to try your first month for 19 dollars. that's less than most gym memberships the link is in my description below thank you future back at the stove i put my beef pan down over high heat and used a paper towel to soak up about half of the oil left in the pan next in goes my peppers and poblanos and then all of my onions I'll follow with a strong pinch of salt to draw out some moisture. That's going to help deglaze the beef fawn left over in the pan, and it's also going to help these veggies cook much faster. Next, I'll give this pan a vigorous shake and stir with some tongs to scrape up that steak flavor and to get the veggies evenly coated with the two tablespoons of oil I left in this pan. 45 to 60 seconds later, I'll come back and give everything another shake up and scrape up to get any caramelized bits off the bottom of the pan and to help get some fresh veggies touching the hot surface. I'll do this sear and toss about two to three more times. Again, that's every 45 to 60 seconds of not touching anything so that the veggies can caramelize and then I'll give it a vigorous stir to mix things up and get anything off the bottom of the pan that might be burning. Check it out. This is what the mix looks like after two very hot minutes of searing and tossing. I'll go one more round here, maybe two, and in total, I think five minutes over very high heat should get the appropriate amount of caramelization while also softening the veggies enough to make them fun to eat. Next, in goes my minced garlic, then my spices, and I'll stir those in to combine. The pan's ripping hot, obviously, and at this point, both the spices and the garlic will burn super fast if you take them too far. Once you smell the garlic shift from raw to lightly fried it's time to pull these off the heat take a quick look at the peppers and onions though they're soft but not mushy and that's exactly what i think makes a perfect fajita from here i'll scoot these into a bowl so that i can combine them off heat with the beef more on that in a second though. While I finish the fajita mix, I'm gonna drop some flour tortillas into a nonstick pan over medium low heat. For me, flour tortillas are the Tex-Mex standard and as an ingredient, I think they're somehow still underrated. I have a recipe for some lard based ones that I think are pretty exceptional. So if you wanna go the extra mile here, I'll link to that video in the description below. Now to cut the steaks, I need to go against the grain. That means perpendicular to the way the fibers run inside the meat. Again, shorter fibers mean more tender meat. Now using a sharp Sharp knife, I'm gonna go ahead and slice this meat pretty thinly and against that grain. Anywhere from an eighth to a quarter inch is gonna be fine here. And ooh, check the cook on this meat. It's just about medium, which I think is perfect for a fajita. Mid-rare is a little bit too chewy for this cut of beef in this set of circumstances. Once I've got all four of these steaks sliced thin, I'm gonna scoot them over into the bowl with the peppers and then add in all of the resting juices from the plate. On top of that beef, I'll add in the juice of half of a lime, more if you think it's necessary, and then a strong pinch or two of fresh chopped cilantro. Now I'll toss everything to combine and and there we go, perfectly cooked fajita mix. It's bright, tender, flavorful, and most importantly, not dry. One last move before I serve this is to move the mix into a medium low pan that I heated my tortillas in just a second ago. The cutting and mixing has cooled off the peppers and beef enough that they need a little bit of a reheat. Don't go too far with the reheat though. The last thing we wanna do is overcook this beef. Give this stuff just enough to heat it through. Now to plate up one of these fajitas, I'll grab a fresh floppy flour tortilla and then added four to six ounces of my fajita mix. Honestly, you could stop right here and I would be very happy, but to bring a touch of acidity, I'll add some of my 15 minute weeknight tomatillo salsa. I showed the recipe for this one in my chicken al pastor video, which I'll link below if you're interested. And then to bring some fresh richness on top of that, I'll sprinkle on a little bit of grated queso fresco. Feta would be a great sub if you don't keep queso fresco in your fridge. Then finally, some fresh chopped cilantro. And that's it. You guys, fajitas can be really great. And one of the main things I love about making them is that it's not hard to do so. You simply pay attention, use a really hot pan and cook things properly. And all of a sudden you've got yourself a very interesting, vibrant dinner in only about 30 minutes. I really hope you guys give this one a try soon. Let's eat this thing.